Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm showing with you another watercolor workout in my little Arteza uh, watercolor journal. I like the shape of this one, it's long and narrow and cute. And I am drawing a frog. I guess we can count this as my animal portrait <laughs> for the month <laughs> because I don't know if I'm going to get one done. Um, all the things that I said I was going to do this year haven't happened. So, you know, life happens, things happen, and you have to adapt. But I decided to draw a cute little frog. Um, at one point I was going to make a frog paper painting and I uh, still had the reference material for it. So um, I just used that to try and make the shape correct. Uh, it's a picture of a green, some kind of a green tree frog or something. Um, couldn't tell you the species or anything, but I'm I'm sketching using a Stabilo All pencil. This is the gray graphite colored one. It's kind of funny. The black, the black Stabilo All pencil is black, has black paint around it. The blue one has blue paint. The red one has red paint, and so on. But the gray graphite one has red. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just one of those little weird things that I notice sometimes. So I was trying to figure out, does the frog have three fingers or four fingers? Because in a lot of, in the picture, I guess his little fingers or toes or whatever were all underneath, kind of like he was, you know, crouched under. So it looked like he had three, but then I noticed later on in the picture that actually there was a fourth one on one of them and you could just see a part of it that went, this went under the frog. So then I realized, okay, they must have four. So I had to go back and change and give my frog four fingers or toes or whatever they are eventually. <laughs> Trying to be more accurate. I guess they have four. It just didn't look like it in the picture. It all looked like three because each each leg was positioned in a way that one of one of the little toe fingers was underneath its body. Also, it's uh, apparently has bulgy eyes. I guess that's a characteristic of a frog. Um, on on the picture, you could only see one side of the eye and then the other there was just this bump so I guess that's the back of the bulgy eye on the other side I think we can all recognize a frog like if we saw a frog we know that's a frog but ha how many of us have actually really examined one <laughs> or any animal for that point you know really studied it there's just things that I hadn't noticed before so once I'm done uh, making a sketch in my watercolor journal, then I just kind of erase uh, the main the main amount to make it lighter, hoping that those lines won't show up as much in the picture. This is a water soluble pencil. Graphite's water soluble, so uh, theoretically the lines would go away, but I have found that that's not really the case. They don't exactly dissolve into the watercolor like I expected. I did this sketch before the live show, but then I painted it during the live show. And I, in the live show, I was trying to use the the Crayon Diash Nail Color 2 Water Soluble Crayons, which is a product that I absolutely love. I just love these. Uh, they have a lot of pigment, they're soft, they dissolve easily, and you can use them direct to paper or, of course, you can color them off like you see that I had been doing on the wax paper above. I need to get one of those uh, paper palette pads, and I just, I never remember to get it. <laughs> so um, that would be better because the wax paper does uh, react to the water and start to dissolve a little bit. But 
I think that wax paper piece, if I can keep keep it the way it is, will look nice and collage at some point. And I'll just have to make sure not to smear it because it just looks kind of cool. So what I'm doing now is I'm using some stencils with the crayons. This works really great. You lay down the stencil and then you color over the top of it. Some of the color does go through the stencil if, if you press really hard, but mostly it just kind of colors onto the stencil. These crayons or pastels, um, it, whichever you want to call, are kind of waxy. And so they have a little bit of give to them and they will color onto the stencil. And then when you go in with the wet rag or in this case a baby wipe and wipe through, it um, gets, you know, it smooths out the, the crayon look and it, it uh, puts the color through and then you still get the lines of the stencil. So this is a fun technique to do. These are all Stencil Girl stencils. I have a lot of Stencil Girl stencils now because I am on their design team. And so I, plus I'm on, in their club <laughs> and every month I get stencils. And I think I've been in the club for like a, at least a year now. So I have assembled a lot of Stencil Girl stencils. I'm very Happy about that because I think they're great for mixed media. They have a lot of interesting designs created by real artists who draw them. They're not created by machine or anything. And they treat their designers and their artists really, really well. They, they give commissions on the stencils, which I think is great. Every time a, st a person's design gets sold, they get a commission, which is how it should be and, and that's not necessarily all always what happens so these stencils are all on my desk um, I know that that uh, spokes and wheels stencil that I really love that I used on the left hand side is one you can purchase I think this little splatter one is from club and it, if you want to purchase old club stencils you can join the club and then you can retroactively go back and purchase all the stencil sets from the previous years or any that you want but that's the only way to get them stencils from the club are only for club so you have to be in the club to get the club stencils they're exclusives uh, this little uh, puddles and droplets one is also one that you can purchase and I will link these stencils in the description box below the video if you would like to find them that puddles one that I just used with the circles I think it's called puddles or maybe it's called pebbles something like that I think it might have been designed by Ray Miss Sigmund and it has a negative one as well so like you take the little stencil out and then there's a leftover that's fun to use on the gel plate because it just has that random uh, circle-y pattern that you can use on the gel plate it looks pretty cool so it kind of has two parts, which is nice. There's quite a few of those stencils actually that have a punch out part that's a mask and then you're left with the other part that's a stencil and you can use both of them in different ways or the same way really. So now I'm starting to color the frog and I started out with a very uh, green, yellow, bright color at the top and I'm coloring it onto the paper and then using a water brush, this is an Arteza one, to activate and spread the color. Because when you draw it on, it looks like a crayon, you know, like that kind of um, dotty, crumbly looking look. But you can, of course, because it's so reactive to water you can just smooth it right out with a with a brush I switched to a more it's a color called Chinese green which is a chartreuse interestingly on the video they all look very yellow but they're actually green colors that one that that Chinese green even says green on it <laughs> I think the other one was maybe called yellow green or something like that this frog is a bright 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 green 
and then seems to have some uh, dots on its back, little bumpy dots that have some brownish red colors in them. So those are the colors I'm going to use. And that's the reason that I did the stencil background in reds and oranges. I thought it would be a nice contrast against the green and also then coordinate with those little funny spots on the frog's back. So I'll be putting those in with the stencil because that's that splattery, speckly stencil actually works perfect <laughs> for making the dots. The thing about making dots on something, if you draw them by hand, just by the nature of hum humans, we just like to make them all the same, you know? Like we like pattern, we like it to be harmonious, and in nature it's random, it's completely random. Well, not all things, but a lot of things in nature appear to be very random. So, you know, using this, this splatter stencil, which was probably made literally by splattering and then tracing the tracing around the splatters to make the stencil, I would guess. I mean, I don't know how she made it, but. Or he, it could be a he too. There's a couple designers that are guys. And I'm not sure where that stencil came from. I think it's pretty sure it's club though. So I'll have to go back and look for it. At stencilgirlproducts.com is where you get them. So I'm just continuing to color. I added in a third color. And I think that one might be called Jade. Jade green, maybe. It's a darker green. Here I am putting on the little dots using that same stencil on the back of the frog. And just using, a, I think, an orangey red color, one of, one of the colors from the background. Also use that the same orange and red colors in the frog's eye. He's a cutie. Frogs are cute. So this is how you can use the crayon as a watercolor by just scratching it onto something, paper or in this case, wax paper. The reason I brought the wax paper is because I, I often do it just right on the deli paper on my desk, but I thought something less absorbent like a waxed paper would be, you would get more color out, you know, because it wouldn't absorb into the paper. That was my theory. But I found out that wax paper isn't actually as impervious to water as I thought. <laughs> it's waxed paper, right? It should be waterproof or water resistant. Uh, it's, it's water resistant, I guess, but it's definitely not waterproof because it will go through and be affected by water. And what I'm doing is just filling in around closer to the frog where I couldn't get the stenciling. You can see through a stencil to some extent, but I was trying to avoid pattern on the frog, of course, because I wanted it to be separate as if it's on top of the pattern. So then I decide to add a little contrast using a black Stabilo All pencil. This is a highly water reactive pencil, very water reactive. And I'm activating that again with the same water tank brush. This brush has water inside the barrel and then it has that little valve where the red is that you can squeeze and the water comes down into the brush. So you don't have to dip. You don't have to keep dipping your brush in water. Also a nice synthetic bristle that doesn't get worn out by scrubbing and um, abuse. So, but still soft enough to be very, very nice to use. I really, I think I use these water tank brushes more than any other kind of brush that I own. I use them with acrylic, I use them with watercolor, I use them with ink, I use them with everything. <laughs> Even alcohol ink, you can put alcohol inside the barrel instead of water and use them to paint with alcohol ink. Um, however, that will wear out the brush faster than anything else because alcohol is a solvent ultimately. So continuing to go around the edge, add some shading and shadow. And eventually, I think I decide 
that the frog needs to have something to sit on. You know how I get really annoyed by things that are floating, um, things that don't have a ground. I always have to draw a ground for things to sit on so they're not just floating on the background. And maybe this is a wall and maybe he was stuck to a wall or something, but I decided to draw in a stick or a branch or something for him to stand on eventually. And I just did that with the Stabilo pencil and then um, put a little bit of, of color in it later on, some red or whatever later on. Just I just felt it needed it. I hope you're enjoying this video. I hope you're enjoying this hashtag watercolor workout theme for the month of January and February from Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group. A uh, link to the Facebook group will be below as well as uh, links to products. If you are enjoying it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're already subscribed, turn on your notification bells so that you will know when there's a new video out and that all those things help my channel grow by helping people find me out here in the YouTube universe where it's very very populated and hard to find just one single channel. Also, you can pin this to Pinterest. Uh, you can share it on Facebook. And anything that you are making with water-soluble media this month or last month, you can post on social media using the hashtag watercolor workout and it will help people find your art. And you can, of course, post it in the Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group, which is all about sharing your art. So we'd love to see what you're doing with the theme. And we'll have something different going on next month. I don't know what it is yet. There is a schedule already out, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I can't tell you. Besides, I guess I shouldn't tell you till next month, March. So here I am just uh, finishing up a little bit of shading on those uh, bumps on the frog with a little bit of the Stabilo pencil. And then I added some crayon in to my little weird branches or whatever they are that the frog is standing on. I also came back in at some point. I don't know if I've done it yet. I can't tell. I use a, po a white Posca pen to add some highlights around the top of the frog and the top of his eye and inside his eye and on the little bumps. And I add, add more Stabilo pencil underneath to give a little bit more shade as well, a little bit more contrast of shadow. I, I'm not exactly sure when all that happened, but I know I did it. <laughs> I think I add a little bit more stenciling up at the top still. I know there's just a few more minutes of things that I did just to finish up this page. I have some more drawings on the other side that I haven't finished yet. I made some quick sketches before the Art Joy of Sharing live stream yesterday. We live stream every Thursday at 1030 Central Time on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel which is a different channel than this one. This is a, a channel about process videos that are sped up and voiced over. On the live stream, you'll see it in actual real time. And it's myself and Peg Robinson together um, doing the live stream. So you can comment and chat during the live stream. And it's fun. It's just on ten, at 10.30 Central Time on Thursdays. You can just pop over there and join the fun. We like to see new people. We have some regular people and then sometimes occasionally new people pop in and it's just fun. It's just uh, a different experience than this. So I'm adding the shadows underneath the frog now as if the light source is coming from the left hand side and the body of the frog is creating a shadow on the branch. So, yeah. He's just about done. This, this is just fussing at this point, you know, when you can just sit there for hours and continue to fuss or you can stop. <laughs> at some point you have to stop, right? At some point. But 
if I, if I let myself, I could just keep going and going and adding little things and, and uh, never really finding the finishing time. That's, that's how I roll. So just trying to get it done. I did have to move on and go do some other stuff eventually. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.